Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I want to walk through an overview of the features and functionality for the categorical slicer field types that you can put into a slicer on the page in Power BI. Because there are many different ways, as you can see in front of us, to configure not only the look, but the design of them, plus some important functionality considerations for how the user would want to interact with it and the types of filtering scenarios they might have. So I want to discuss all the features end to end so we get the art of possible and understand truly how to implement these and all the considerations to keep in mind. Let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. I'm going to use a product hierarchy slicer that we have here in the upper left, where we'll have the product category, subcategory, and product name at each of these lower parent and child levels. Now, one of the first considerations that I want to mention when we're using a slicer like this that has a lot of different fields inside of it is it's very useful to include a search bar. So when we can search for things such as cell, it will show us a filtered list related to all the items below it. Now, depending on what you might wanna select, you can choose one or multiple at a time. I've also had a few people request whether or not there is a way to do a select all option similar to a filtered list in Excel when you search for a field to filter on. Unfortunately, that's not available today in Power BI, but it is something that is on the ideas website. So hopefully someday we do get that particular feature. Now the search field here can be turned on coming up to the ellipses and enabling it from this menu here. And that will then add this search box into the menu. So that is one thing to consider when you have a lot of fields using either a vertical or a drop down slicer is to turn on the search bar. Now, in addition to that, I want us to consider the filter scenarios for multiple selections. The default behavior for a slicer in Power BI is you click, it selects one value at a time. However, if you want to multi-select, you can hold control key and then be able to select multiple items at the same time. If this is a common filtering scenario though, I would recommend that we actually come over to the menu here under visualizations. You can see an option for multi-select with a control, turn that off, come back to the menu here, now we can see that without having to hold the control key, we can make multiple selections at the same time. Now, another filter scenario to consider is whether or not there should only ever be one selection made at a time, and should there always be a filtered selection enforced when you publish this report. So the single select option, turning that on, you can see the slicer over here has now defaulted to audio. The squares have turned to circular radio buttons, and only one selection can ever be made at a time, plus the menu closes when you make a selection because only a single selection can ever be made. Now, the one downside to this is one of these has to be published as the default selection to be made as the filter because there is no way now to actually clear your selection coming up to the upper right. So that is one caveat to have with this option, but it will ensure that at any level, only one selection can ever be made at a particular time with the single select option. Coming back to the format and design, turning single select off and show select all. Let's go ahead and turn this one on. Coming back to this, now what we have as an option in here is the ability to do a select all and a show select all button with this enabled essentially allows you to do an everything except. So now I can select most of my items, but maybe I just do not want to see cell phones, but I want to see the filters for everything else. So it lets me deselect a value rather than focusing on the values that I want to select. So it allows for less clicks to arrive at this particular filter scenario. And those cover the majority of the configurations at a filter functionality level for the end users. There are a few other considerations that I will cover in terms of design and aesthetics. Now, one thing that's important to note here, I'm gonna go ahead and clear this. Most of us are probably familiar with the fact that if I was to check audio, publish this report, this would be the default state. Now there's another important consideration. If I was to expand this out and close this, if I publish this report, any user that opens this report will see audio expanded down. So the leaf and parent node expansions and collapses in a slicer is part of that default publishing experience that a user will see. In addition to that, anything typed into the search box. So if I have cell typed into there, Again, if I publish this and a user opens this up, they will see a cell typed in here. This might be a way to provide a nice prompt for them to search for something, but also it's something that I myself have published multiple times forgetting that that was there. So just be aware that if you type anything in here, if you do not delete it, that is saved with the file upon publishing this report. So we wanna make sure that this is cleared out 
and this has all been properly configured when publishing this slicer. Let's also come to the slicer configurations page where I have a few other slicer configurations applied into here. We've already explored the dropdown. In the vertical list, there's some options that were added within the last year. We come back to the format pane, open up the hierarchy section. We have the ability now to actually control the stepped layout indentation. So let me show you this. I'm going to open audio. I'm going to change this from 15 to 25. And what we'll observe is that these get indented at a further pixel distance. So you can choose how much of an indent it has, and you can give it less or more within the range. Additionally, the expander collapse has the ability to be configured between the standard chevron, the plus or minus, or the caret, depending on your design. And the last two types of filter displays that we can do is the two that we see over here. So this slicer right here versus the one that we have at the top simply will show a horizontal scroll between that. Now the difference between these two, if I was to grab this and resize it, notice that I'm not getting the tiles. However, now this one down here, notice that it automatically starts to add rows as I give it space. The biggest difference between these two, once again, coming to format, general, properties, advanced options, it's whether or not I have responsive turned off. So for the visual, the slicer setting type is style of tile. And as long as I have responsive on, it automatically will stack them and turn it into more of a grid, depending on whatever size that I give it. Now, if I turn that off, then it will just give me that single row, regardless of how tall or wide I make it. But overall, this covers a nice broad sweeping discussion around each of the various features, implementations, and filter considerations that we might have for users all related at least to categorical slicers on the page. Hopefully this was something you found useful and it should prevent you from experiencing a few of the pitfalls that I myself have definitely hit before, especially with publishing, with having some of the parent or leafs open or closed, accidentally forgetting to reset those or typing in something into the search bar. So hopefully you can avoid those as well. If you like this video, check out some of my related content in the upper left. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe. And otherwise, I will see you all in my next video.